Growing up exploring Alaska's ever-changing landscape inspires a lifetime of learning. That's why Alaska 529 is a proud sponsor of the Alaska Sea Life Center and focused on helping families take small steps now for their child's future education. To learn about the Alaska 529 plan, its investment objectives, risks, and costs, carefully read the plan disclosure document available at alaska529plan.com. Alaska 529. Save in Alaska. Study anywhere. Hello, everybody. How are you today? Uh, my name is Laura, and today we're going to talk a little about my favorite animals right here in the touch pool, in the touch tank able for you to come and touch when you come and visit the Alaska Sea Life Center. So the way this is going to work is it's a great partnership between us and Alaska 529, as you saw in the little bit of a commercial we played right at 11 o'clock. They're a great college savings plan that you can work with. Uh, the website and stuff is in the uh, description below. If you want to go ahead and check that out, it's a great organization. We're really happy to be partnered with them to be able to bring you these programs for free every other Thursday between now and May uh, 13th. Uh, we'll have a variety of topics and we'll change things up, but all the kind of uh, building blocks are all gonna be the same. So we are going to start today with a little bit of a story. We're gonna learn about some of these animals in the touch tank. Then my friend Darren has joined us and we're gonna play a fun guessing game right after we get done. So like I said, we're gonna learn a little bit about the animals in our touch pool, how cool they are, and what cool adaptations. We learned about that word two weeks ago. Adaptations are really cool things that help animals live where they do. And so we're going to get ready, but first, we are going to read a great story. So give me just a minute. Let me pull this book out and get ready to go. This is a fun one. It's one of my favorite ones. One Small Place by the Sea. And it's all about how really cool things are right in that tide pool. A lot of us are able to walk to the tide pool and have really great parts, a really great exploration, just like that small child was at the beginning. Let me move my camera and boom, we're going to talk a little bit about this. OK, a tide pool, one small place. This one's no bigger than a bathtub. It lies among the rocks and the weeds at the edge of the sea. See how cool, all these cool things? And we're gonna explore about some of these things in a minute. At high tide, it's full of water. At low tide, it's no more than a salty puddle. Tides make it and unmake it twice a day. That's where it gets its name, tide pool. Imagine standing at the rim of this tide pool as the tide comes in. What do you see? I'll move the book a little bit closer to the camera. What kind of cool stuff do you see? I see some sea stars, some water, some rocks. Oh, I see a chitin. We're going to talk about those a little bit later today. Good job. Dozens of small animals and plants jumbled together over and under next to the top of one another. After a while, your eyes begin to sort them out. I'm going to pause again and see. Sorry, it's a mirrored image on my side. What kind of cool stuff do you see? Different stuff than the last time? More stuff? Less stuff? Do you see any of your favorite colors? I see one of my favorite colors, green, right here in this anemone. We're going to learn about more of those later. Good job. Here's an ochre sea star. It moves slowly along the bottom on hundreds of tiny little two feet. There's a bunch of blue mussels hanging in the rocks. They've spun threads of wiry glue to attach themselves. On the sandy bottom of the pool, there are two giant green anemones. The anemones look like plants, but they're really animals. But that creature in the weeds looks like a fish, and that is a fish. It's a sculpin, a fish that lives only in tide pools. Now you're looking more closely, and you begin to see smaller and smaller things. Hermit crabs, turban snails, periwinkles, limpets, chitons a rock covered with barnacles. You lift a tangle of seaweed, surprise! Worms and bugs and snails, no bigger, no bigger than a baby's finger. Tons of really cool stuff. Oh, I can't wait to go tide pooling, it's a great day outside. 
Now the sea star goes hunting. It climbs up the rock, moves along the mussel colony, and picks a target. The mussel tries to close, but the sea star pushes itself inside the mussel shell. Its powerful stomach juices turn the mussel into mush. The sea star sucks up the mush. Sea stars are really cool, and we might learn a little bit about this today. They actually, instead of eating things with their mouth, they take their tummies outside, they take their stomachs outside of their mouth, and just put it on whatever they're going to eat. It's very, very cool. Imagine if you went and had lunch with all of your friends, and you took your stomach outside of your mouth and put it on your food, and you just sat there and waited for it to digest. It would be very weird, but super cool. A turban snail glides by and picks up the scent of a sea star. Alarmed, it moves away. But in its haste, it brushes against the tentacles of one of the anemones. Those tentacles are deadly. And in a few seconds, the snail is food for the anemone. It eats the soft parts and spits out the hard shell. <laughs> a hermit crab sees the empty shell and looks over. This is not about food. It's about space. The crab has outgrown the shell, and it needs more space. It tries the empty shell on for size. Good fit. It will move away, carrying the, new, carrying the new home on its back. Can you imagine if you grew, you had to buy a new house all the time? You kind of do. You have to buy new clothes as you get nice and big. This is an entire house. After about six hours, the tide turns once again. The waves, uh, excuse me, I'm sorry. The tide turns once again. The waves no longer reach the tide pool. The water level in the tide pool begins to drop. The mussels close up, close up, the sea star rests. The hermit crab retreats into its new shell. Periwinkles, limpets, and chitons move closer on the rocks to catch some ocean spray. You gotta worry about drying out. You gotta protect yourself. The sculpin comes back to the tide pool and swims towards the bottom. The anemones shrink, the plants stop, make, the plants stop making their own food, and it's time the tide pool, it's downtime at the tide pool until the tide comes again. Nothing in nature lasts forever. A sea star might eat all the mussels here, then there would be empty space in the tide pool. New animals and plants would drift into that empty space. The tide pool would look different and be different. Or a gull might come and go gobble up the sea star. Without, a, without the hungry sea star, the mussel might, uh, mussel bed might overgrow. The tide pool would get too crowded. Some things would squeeze out. Some things might die. The tide pool would still be a tide pool, but it would change. Last page. There are tide pools all over the world. No two tide pools are exactly the same. No two tide pools have the same animals or the same plants, but some things are always the same. Every tide pool in the world depends on tides, and every tide pool is one small place that is home for many things. Very good. That was such a good story. I really like reading that one to all my small friends because it's so great, and it talks about a lot of animals that are in the touch pools and the tide pools around Alaska that we might not always see. But we're gonna talk about all the little things that have the tide pool homes. And what's gonna happen is my friend Darren, who's right off screen, we're gonna play a guessing game. He is going to dress up like some of the animals here in our touch pool. And I want you at home to guess what animal he's dressed up like. And it's okay if you don't know the name, if you just know what it is, it's okay, some of these names are really big and you might hear new names for new animals you didn't even know existed until after today. And that's cool, it's all about learning about cool things in your backyard. So first, Darren, are you ready with our first one? Very good, so Darren's gonna come on screen. He's gonna creep around behind me and he's going to crawl like our first thing. We may have seen a little bit about this in our, whoop, that's wrong one, sorry about that. What is Darren looking like? Say really loud what you think it might be, because I can't see you or I can't hear you. Say it really loud. He's got these nice pokey things that protect him when he's in the water and some cool things that will reach out and grab animals. Good job. If you said urchin, you are correct. So let's switch over to our urchin. Whoops, sorry, Darren. 
go ahead and go. Uh, our uh, urchin here is right here. They're, they just got fed, so there might be some little food in their, in their mouths, which is on the bottom of their body. So it takes a little bit of uh, uh, finagling, some moving around. And you see those really cool two feet that are moving around, searching out food. Those reach out and get food, and then they bring it back to their tummies. So I'm going to move the camera. If you get a little seasick when things kind of shake around, go ahead and close your eyes, and I will be right back. All right, ready? Close your eyes. Okie dokie, you can open your eyes again. This is another type of urchin, but I wanted to move to this one because they have some of that fish. Right before we started, our aquarist. Aquarist is a big word for people who take care of animals in our aquarium department. So things like fish or all of these animals in the tide pool are taking care of them. And we're gonna meet one of those later in our program. So this guy's hanging out, got some fish in that tummy. They don't have a mouth like you or I, they actually have a beak, kind of like a bird, but instead of two parts, like a bird beak would be, it actually is five, like a star, and it eats those things. But they are really cool. Um, they like to hang on, those two feet help them get kept hang on, excuse me, I'm sorry. Those two feet help them hold on to things, especially when that tide comes in and out and in and out from time to day. Uh, these guys uh, hold on really tight. And I'm gonna see if I can move this one more time. We're gonna, oh, actually, I think I can do it. So a lot of people will come to the touch pools and they're really excited about touching things. All of our stuff in our touch pools, are, it's touchable, it won't hurt you. Some of them are gonna look really scary and that's okay. They kind of want to look scary so that things won't eat them. So I'm gonna take one finger and I'm gonna show you what the coolest thing to do in the touch tank. I'm gonna say that a lot because everything in the touch tank is really cool to do. But one of my favorite things is getting an urchin hug. Again, these guys look really scary but they, they kind of like hugging. So I'm gonna come over on the right hand of the camera and I'm gonna try to get them to give me a little bit of an urchin hug. One finger in and then all of those little spines reach around and give me a nice, nice hug. Um, they're looking for food and they're looking for all kinds of stuff. But it's very, very cool. And then I just whoop and there's no danger at all. It doesn't hurt me at all. And that is a really cool animal called an urchin. Very good. Darren, are you ready for our next animal? Very good. Okay, so we're gonna switch over one more time. Really loud, what do you think Darren is? Hangs out on the bottom, flows around with the water, and they look really scary. I'll give you one more hint. There's a little orange fish that will live in these way over in Australia, but we don't have any uh, Nemo fish that live here. An anemone, good job. So we're gonna go back over to our camera and we're gonna look for an anemone. We're gonna close our eyes really quick in case you get motion sickness. Whoop, boop. Very good. So this is an anemone. We have a couple of different kinds in here. They're very, very cool. They look, again, they look really scary because you see Finding Nemo and they have the shocks and stuff like that. These guys don't have that. I can touch them, no big deal. They get kind of sticky, kind of like if you've got tape stuck on you. They are super, super soft and squishy. Some of them, I'm gonna move the camera one more time. We're gonna see if we can get a nice up close and personal look at this guy. Some of them are kind of ticklish. Got a bad reflection, I'm sorry. And when you touch them, they'll suck in their little tentacles and all go inside. They'll do that when they're digesting food. Again, these guys just got fed this morning, so that some of them have some really great uh, some food in their tummies getting ready to go. Oop. Just like that. They're kind of sticky, but super fun and soft. The stickiness is so they can stick to food. And we're going to have a video of our aquarist coming to take care of these guys. Set this down one more time. We're going to do it on the urchin. Very good. So these guys are super squishy, super fun, and they're a great thing to touch uh, uh, here in our touch tank. 
All right, Darren's getting ready for our next one. We're gonna be ready. Whoa, okay. All right, ready, Freddy's? We're gonna get ready to go. Three, two, one, go. Guess what you think it is? We learned about this in our book where that's, uh, that animal that took their tummy out, their stomach out of their mouth and threw it on the food they were gonna eat. These guys move really slow. It looks like Darren's enjoying a bucket for dinner or for breakfast. Oh, it's lunchtime here. Say it really loud, I can't hear you. Yeah, he's being a sea star, very good. So we have a sea star here in our touch tank. Just like our anemone friends, these guys have a really good, these tubed feet that help them hold on to things and make sure they don't go anywhere when that tide comes in and out and in and out. So um, they, uh, hold on, uh, sea stars, though a lot of people don't know this, they actually have eye or eye spots at the very tips of their arms. They're very hard to see. Um, but there is a lot of different sea stars out here. We're gonna do a little bit of a little bit of exploring. Looks like Darren wants to show off his sea star ability. Boop. And they do a lot of just sitting just like that. Now, sea stars, like Darren, can have four or five different arms. Darren, can we count your arms? Let's start with your head. We'll do one, two, three four and five very good but if we go over to this sea star let's count how many it has we can start at the top and do one two three four five six so sea stars can have a lot of different types of arms or a lot of different numbers of arms some of them have a lot some of them have just a few and a lot of times people think that sea stars are really really and most of the time they are but some of our sea stars are super super fast and we're going to take a little bit of time and we are going to look at how fast a sea star can be now this is a little bit of a cheating thing these guys are actually a thing called a time lapse which means we recorded it and then sped it up but it shows how cool these guys actually are when they are uh, hanging out uh, around us Very good. <laughs> Sorry, Dan, got a little bit of spoiler. So, okay, one, we're gonna do three more. One, two, three more animals, and then we're gonna be done for today. So we'll do three, uh, four more, we're gonna do four. Uh, so our next one's really cool. It's kind of weird. It's one that I didn't even know existed until I moved to Alaska. It's very, very cool. Are we ready to guess what Darren is? Ready? Go. Say it really loud. I can't hear what you are. Oh, moving very, very slow on top of that bucket. Even adults, you can even guess this too because this is one that's kind of difficult. Very slow. It is something called a chitin. So I'm gonna transition to my candy cam again, and it might be a little hard to find these guys because they are so small and so tiny, but they're in here, just have to find them. But they have shells on, oh, I found one. All right, you're gonna lift it up. Close your eyes if you get motion sick. Whoop. Very good. We're gonna zoom in on that guy, right? Come on, focus please. There we go. I think it'll help more with. There we go. Very good. This is a lined chitin. 
sorry for that really blurry minute for a second. Um, these guys are super cool. They stick to the rock and make sure that they don't get away, uh, don't get sucked out to sea. They're super small. This is tiny. We do have some gumboot chitons in here, but it seems like they've been missing. Well, all right, we're gonna move again. One, two, three, go. These guys are a little closer so I can zoom out a little bit, but these guys are gonna look like a big rock. Where'd they go? Oh, there they are. It doesn't look a big rock. I thought it was a rock. These are really cool and big chitons. They have a, a, a tongue that kind of sticks to the rocks around them. It's very, very cool and they have very slow moving, just like uh, Darren was giving us a good example. I'm gonna move the camera over again. Close your eyes if you get motion sick. So motion sick, one, two, three, go! So Darren brought the costume over to us. I'm gonna zoom out. Whoop. Very good. And you can see how these little shell bits, oops. These little shell bits all over help them uh, protect themselves as they go in. We've got different pieces. It's very, very nifty. And as they move, those bits move around and help them protect themselves from all kinds of animals that might want to eat them. Oh, let's count them. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Eight. Very good. Is there a little one down there at the bottom? And eight. Very good. Okie dokie, friends. I'm going to put the camera down one more time. Let you guys explore the touch tank where I get our next little bit and Darren dresses up like our next animal. Okie dokie. Well, so our next animal is really uh, potentially scary looking like a lot like I said a lot of our animals here kind of look scary but it's so they don't get eaten a lot of animals like to eat these animals because they're they're kind of when you get down to it kind of squishy even our urchin some animals like otters are especially here we're gonna use that word again adaptive have special adaptations like really strong jaw muscles to help them eat those really pokey animals all right Darren are we ready with our next one well your head's poking in all right, let's go. Very slow moving, very slow moving. These costumes were also made for kids about your size, not kids about Darren's size. Nice and slow. This is also, I'll give you a hint for this one. Some of you that like to eat green salads, might have something with this same name on your salads. Where did it go? That's a cucumber. So let's go over to our touch tank again and see if we can find some cucumbers in our touch tank. Whoop. There's one way in the back. All right, close your eyes. Whoop. There's two of them right here in the back. The long guys right there, they look kind of pokey and scary. Oh, here's one right here in front of me. Whoop. Right here for their close up. Right there. So I'm going to touch them like I did the rest of them. They're going to look really pokey and scary. But they're actually really squishy. Whoop. Nice and squishy. These, uh, oh, sorry, bud. These spikes are really soft. And when we come to the touch stick, we always touch everything with a nice one or two finger touch. Nice and gentle, because like the book said, some people think these are plants or they, don't, they aren't alive. But all of the animals in here, uh, all the things in here, maybe except for the rocks, are alive. So we have a nice, soft touch. You don't want to pick them up or anything. They're really cute and soft. And they just kind of hang out. They're really good cleaners. So they make sure that the ocean and the bottom of our touch tank is super nice and clean. And they don't, uh, so they eat lots of really kind of what we would consider gross stuff on the bottom of the ocean. Um, uh, and make sure all of the sand and stuff is really, really clean. We got Darren putting on one of his, our last costumes today. We ready to go, Darren? Let me get over here for you guys. You, all right. There he goes. 
What do you think he is? Really loud. He's a crab. Good job. He's doing that great crab walk back and forth with those little pinchers. Good job. We'll go over to our camera once again to see if we can find a crab in here. Got some shells. We got some types of crab, but I'm looking for a very specific type of crab. Everything is so well camouflaged that sometimes it's kind of hard to find the things that I'm looking for. But I found him over here in the corner being the crabby, crabby animal that he is, or they are. Whoop, a little blurry. There we go. They have that hard shell that helps protect their body and make sure they're nice and protected from all animals that might try to eat them. Now, T Darren added something to his costume. Let's see. What kind of crab is he now? It's slightly different. We learned about this in our book. And then when Darren gets too big, he'll lose that shell and find a new one. He's kind of too big for the shell he's got now. But remember, these are made for small friends. It's a hermit crab. Good job. So we will go back to our camera. A little blurry, but we'll get it going. Oh, there goes your home, Darren. We will go back. I just, oh, it came all the way over here. Here we go. Whoop. Whoop. There we go. A nice hermit crab right here in front for everyone to see. And they are very nice. And a lot of people are fra afraid of touching them, but they are safe to touch. And a lot of time, they just go right into their shell. They're like, oh, no, something big and scary is touching me. But even something as well protected as this hermit crab, we want to touch nice and gentle and make sure they feel nice and safe. <coughs> One of the reasons all of our animals are so chill in the touching is because there's people that aren't, there aren't anybody coming and being mean to them or anything like that. So I hope you enjoyed this nice little bit into our touch tank. We're going to end. You might be asking yourself, where is Tuffy? Tuffy's supposed to be here every week with us. Well, I got a little bit of a surprise for you. Tuffy's busy doing bird stuff. Wasn't able to make it today, but we were able to join him with some of our aquarist friends earlier this week. And he got to join Leo, that aquarist, that, that person that takes care of our animals here at the Sea Life Center and got to feed some of these animals right here behind me. So let's go ahead and check that video out. Hey, Tuffy. <laughs> How you doing? Good, good. Uh, oh, it seems like you can't talk. Okay. Well, um, are you wondering about what I'm going to feed the touch tanks? Yeah, so I'm going to feed them uh, krill today. Very exciting. Very looks delicious. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm going to uh, feed it to one of my favorite tanks, uh, the Discovery Pool animals. So uh, there's all sorts of critters, which is one of the reasons why I, like, uh, I love this, including the crimson anemone. Crimson enemies are pretty cool. The way they eat, they have all these tentacles surrounding them, and then they'll slowly reach in towards their mouth. And that's how they eat. Another one of my favorites is the sea stars. So sea stars are not really good at eating or moving very fast, but they're really good at moving really slow. So over the next day, they'll slowly crawl over to the little bits of food and that's how they eat. Now, I think my favorite is the sea urchin. So the sea urchins are really interesting. They'll actually sit on top of their food and that's how they eat. Their mouth is on the underside and uh, they'll slowly move their food using these awesome little things called tube feet. And the tube feet will slowly draw it underneath where their mouth is. And their mouth itself itself is really cool. It's like a chicken beak, but instead of dividing into two halves, like a chicken, it's actually into five halves or five fifths, and they just gnaw on it. It's really cool. Another one of my favorites, the hermit crabs. You could see uh, this hermit crab eating a little piece right now. And they'll eat just like a paper shredder shreds paper and you'll just eventually see this little krill get gnawed up in its mouth. It's really amazing. 
you could see this hermit crab is making its way over to the little pile of food over there. So yeah, I'm just gonna continue feeding on the rest of the creatures. And that's gonna be their breakfast, lunch, and dinner for the day. That was so cool to be able to see Leo and Tuffy feed these animals behind me. So we hope that you're able to come and join us soon. Uh, we do have a post activity for this posted in the description below. It's a cut and paste and color activity where you're able to take some of the animals and even more than the animals that we le learned about here today and color them and paste them into your own um, uh, aquarium scene or your own tide pool scene. Uh, you can go to and follow the link below, it's a PDF. Uh, but I wanna thank Darren one more time for coming in and helping us uh, guess some of these really cool animals. Uh, we will be doing this in two weeks um, with another topic, another theme, kind of the same building block. So thank you all for joining. This has been really fun. Thanks again to Alaska 529 for allowing us to do this. We hope to see you next time. Thanks, have fun, bye-bye.